This is Dilto. He is a juvenile Dilophosaurus. The sound of a dying animal and the smell of a corpse has lured Dilto out from the rocks. However, he is full aware that there are many others far bigger than him, and he could just as easily become the next meal. The sound of a young Allosaurus in the distance is not a good sign. Even though he might not be in the line of sight, if where there's one Allosaurus, there can always be more. He decides that it's better to let this meal go and live on to hunt another day. But he has to be quick. If he's out in the open, he could easily be snatched from that time's, well, literal griffin. The sound of flapping wing are the sound of Thalmodromius. A big flying reptile who can easily snatch a juvenile Dilophosaurus like Dilto. Just like any protagonist, Dilto's parents was killed by a mysterious killer at a young age. If he wants food, he will have to move somewhere safer. The sound of footsteps wakes Dilto up. He was lucky enough to find a cave only capable of suiting small creatures such as him. However, if he wants food, he will have to venture out into the wild. Dilto is quite lucky. He comes from a line of dinosaurs whose body are built for speed. However, what would happen if what he runs into are also made for speed? His worst nightmare, an Allosaurus. Just like Dilto, Allosaurus's body has evolved to be able to run at an incredible speed. The smell of death doesn't really sound too good either. And what's worse, it seems like there are more than one Allosaurus around. This place may be a nesting spot for young Allosauruses. However, the corpse he just heard and smelled might be his salvation. With Allosaurus already having food in their possession, they might not want to spend effort chasing the little dinosaur. Dilto, however, will need to use his effort to get somewhere safe quickly. He arrives at the lake. Hardly a place he could call safe. As a matter of fact, this is more like a magnet for any creatures around. This place is not safe at all. However, he is thirsty, but most importantly, hungry, and he can smell the stench of death in the air. But for a hungry dinosaur, that stench of death is more arousing and far more irresistible than one could imagine. With nothing but food on his mind, like a person in trance, he followed the scent to the original source.
our young Argentina soldiers. With so much water and vegetation around, there is no chance that this dinosaur fell from either starvation, thirstiness, or illness. This dinosaur was killed by something, but Tilto is far too hungry to care about that. Having eaten his fill, he takes on for the road, but he needs to be quick. The killer that killed it might be around. With nowhere to run, he has but one option. He is lucky. With his body being made for speed, his body weight is on the lighter side. Lighter than compared to his chasers. Knowing that he could be followed, he runs into the forest. However, he is still far too close. He will need to do some more risks. Safe for now. The thick vegetation will act as a cover for Dilto. And hopefully, the rain and sandstorm will cover the scent. Luckily, his kind was one of the first dinosaur to rise from the Triassic, and at the start of the Jurassic period, his kind was the apex predator on the planet. Now however, as long as he is a juvenile, he will have no choice but to wait. A long time has passed, and Dilto has reached his maximum physical capacity. He is now an adult Dilophosaurus. His build is still that for speed though. He is not much for brawling, so fortunately, it's not like he can take down the bigger dinosaurs. Especially even now, since he is solo. However, dinosaur along his size should be manageable. You only need to pray that his luck doesn't run out. Still does seem to be tempting fate, unfortunately. He is currently walking into a valley with full of dinosaur activity. An Allosaurus. Even as an adult, Dilto cannot face an adult Allosaurus. More bad news. A Sarcosuchus. Compared to the Allosaurus, a bite from the jaw of a Sarcosuchus can end Dilto's life in an instant. If he was distracted, say by a from a giant goose, and a sarcosuchus snuck up on him, he could make things go dark quite instantly. Luckily for Dilto, sarcosuchus on land is sluggish and not mobile at all. The Allosaurus, however, is still a threat. A threat he cannot face at the moment. Even though he may be an adult, he still lacks any combat experience. The valley was too dangerous, and Dilto has to find food somewhere else. Dilto has picked up a smell, one he doesn't recognize. and in the distance he can hear rumbling. Something heavy. Footprints 
by something large and fresh. In the tight corner, he sees a tail. He gets curious and wants to investigate closer. A new creature, which he hasn't seen before, with a weird horn on his head. And there are many more of him. Delta doesn't need to be worried about them, however. These are Parasolophus, a herbivore. Unfortunately for Dilto, they are far too big for him to tackle alone, and far too heavy, and there are more of them than him. Even with the pack, it is questionable if Dilto would have tried his luck on these creatures. What's more, with the sound coming from the background, it seems like these two aren't the only one. Why these creatures are out here and not in a place full of water and plants can only be explained. It's a dinosaur migration. And dinosaur migration is a good sign for Dilto. Not every member of a pack can survive the migration, and that is what Dilto is looking for. Checkpot. A carcass. It is questionable if this is a body of a fallen Persolophus. However, that fact matters not for Dilto. He only is concerned with filling his stomach. Something this body will definitely do. After filling his stomach, he makes his way back to the valley following the Persolophuses. It seems like they will be joined by more weed creatures. A Dinochiris is walking along the beach, and even further, an Argentinosaurus is stopping his way through. One of the biggest creatures to ever walk the planet makes his way and nothing will dare stand in his way. He wakes up from his afternoon nap, a metrio campus, getting far too close for comfort. He can run away from him though, just need to pass these weird rocks. He might have been able to take Metro Campus in a fight, however, with the stomach already full, he is really not in the mood. What's more, the rocks seem to be a sleeping Argentinosaurus and Metro Campus got way too close for comfort. A threatening call from the largest creature on the Gondwa. Something that should serve as a warning for any creature to stay away. An Argentinosaurus might be a little bit too much for Dilto to bite through. He will need to find something more his size. Bingo. A Lativa Nitrix. Has made a kill and Dilto wants it. This will be his first fight, and he is uncertain if he really wants to do this. The Lativa Nitrix is by no means an easy target for Delto. Having both speed and mobility on his side, this creature has one of the highest killing success rate of any dinosaur. As a matter of fact, raptors in general were all pretty successful hunters. After feeling out the situation more than enough, he decided 
that the stomach wins. And he let out a warning. Intimidation doesn't seem to be working. So, no other choice but to be physical. In terms of logic, Dilfer should have size advantage on his side. However, the god of Gondwa, also known as Bad Ping, has decided to implement a phenomenon called rubber banding because he doesn't want anyone to have fun. This phenomenon might be something that might turn the battle into the Latinitrix's favor. Also, did I mention that this is Dilto's first fight? And this is not just the narrator making excuses for why the one playing Dilto absolutely sucks. Having lost too much blood, and having Bad Ping just striking the phenomenon on him, Dilto decides that this is a battle he cannot win, and he decides to retreat. In hindsight, this is his best move yet. When it's talk about survival, it's always best to live to fight another day. Pride does not mean anything. Luckily for Dilto, his adversary chose not to follow him. There are two factors that could play a role into why. His adversary might be so low in health that he chose to not continue the battle. But all the other factor, he has already food, no need to waste more effort getting another body. This valley is starting to give Dilto far more competition than he needs. It's time to migrate. A long time has passed and Dilto finds himself waking up from more stomps. In the distance, Dilto sees another creature he has never seen before, and far more bigger than anything he has seen before, with the exception of the Argentinosaurus. However, he feels like this is a creature he needs to be way more careful around with, and he is not alone. Another Sarcus Circus. with a young Spinosaurus besides him. Whatever. With the teeth of a Sarcosuchus, like said before, he could snap Dilto in half. Dilto needs to make sure that he is not distracted with these guys around, especially if he needs to go for a drink. The Spinosaurus, however, is a bit different. Spinosaurus is another predator, far bigger than Dilophosaurus, far bigger than Dilto, but he is far more heavier too, so as long as Dilto keeps his distance, he should be safe. Unbeknownst to Dilto, Spinosaurus might be Dilphosaurus's million of years old descendants. The 
is sleeping in the rain wasn't bad enough. Another ruckus wakes Delta up. A Dinochirus is being attacked by a group of Sarkisuchuses. Delta sees an opportunity. He's a bit hungry, and if the Sarkisuchuses can kill the Dinochirus, Delta could probably run in and steal a slice from the corpse. He just need to bide his time and hope that the Sarkisuchuses win. You know, I kinda wonder if anyone caught on to that foreshadowing. 